everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to share with you guys today, and a kit that's actually quite different than anything else that I've built, uh, actually in quite a long time. And this is the new Masterpiece Models 135th scale Lima 604 shovel. And it may look like a regular model, but it's quite different in the sense that it is 100% resin kit. So if you haven't built resin before, resin gives you a whole new uh, animal basically when we're going to do model building. And that's mainly because resin kits don't use regular plastic cement, they're going to use super glues and those can sometimes be fun to do so you got to really have practice up on that. Plus also there's a little bit more cleanup than a regular plastic model and just the way things go together sometimes. The, uh, it's not necessarily harder, it's just it's a different way of working with things. But as you can see, you can build up this beautiful uh, 35th scale shovel. I believe it's from like the 40s and 50s. I was looking up on it. Couldn't actually find any dates, but based on the shape and stuff and the style, it looks like it's a 40s and 50s type uh, shovel. And as you can see, we went and weathered it and beat it up a little bit. It's a little bit heavier than a normal plastic model. Not too much, but uh, the resin offers a little bit more weight to it. But as you can see, uh, the beauty of the resin models is you can get something like this that quite frankly a plastic company probably would never ever produce uh, it's not going to have the the wide appeal that like a, like a king tiger will have where you see like a hundred different kits of that out there but it's a beautiful kit uh, a lot of fun to do and i'll hopefully walk you guys through a little bit of some of the things that might be a little bit of a challenge especially if you've never worked with resin before so like i said i had a lot of fun with it and i'm excited to share it with you guys today so let's get started Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, before we actually start assembling is going to be cleanup on the model. Because this is a resin model, there is going to be a little bit more cleanup than you would expect to look like a plastic model. In fact, it's taken a couple hours and I'm still kind of working on it right now, but we were able to cut out all of the window frames. And I'll show you a little picture there I took before I actually started cutting them out. And here is one of them right here that uh, most of the time it stuff pops out pretty cleanly. But what I like to do is just take an X-Acto knife and just score the outer edge on all of these. And that is just so you don't put any stress on any of these cross members. You don't want to break one of those. Um, it is possible to put it back into place, but just save yourself a lot of aggravation later on so you're not trying to line up something that doesn't work properly. And then once you just kind of score on the outside there, you should be able to knock this out. And using different types of sanding sticks, you can get in there and finally, or even the edge of the X-Acto knife even, just clean up any of the, the flash that's going to form on the outside. And that is going to be true of all the wheels. Uh, once you cut them off of their little holder, you'll just be able to go in there, hit them with a uh, file stick, and just round them right over. So like I said, there is a, a small amount of flash on, on everything, but that's expected in, in resin casting stuff. So I'm going to finish up all of this, and then we're going to begin building the running gear. Now I've cut the two running gear halves out, and then it'll just be a matter of gluing them together like this and then attaching each one of these wheel surfaces. In fact, there's little pegs on them right here that will get mounted onto each side of it there. But I'm going to get all these cleaned up and we'll show you how that all goes together. Okay, now we can go ahead and glue the two sides together and they have a peg and a hole on the inside here. We've got a brand new thing of super glue because that is going to be the only glue that's going to glue this resin together. and. We'll get this glued up nice and tight, and then we can start applying the wheels. Now there are two sizes of wheels. There is a small and a, and a uh, little bit larger size, and that's kind of hard to tell, but keep, a, keep them all separated because the small wheels go on the top, the bottom wheels go on the bottom. And then once we have this portion glued, these two are gonna fit together and a little bit of a snap, and you can see that now. You'll notice too that I need to do a little sanding on the top of this and the reason I didn't do it yet is once again might as well glue them together and you can sand both of them at the same time. Makes it a little bit quicker when you go to sand things. And now that those are dry we can go ahead and attach the top portions of the wheels. And there's actually two little micro pin holes inside there that'll line up and once they lock in there you'll get the wheel just in the right spot. 
And the same thing will go for the bottom. I still have to clean these up, of course. And we'll just glue all seven of those across the bottom. And you have the basic portion of the running gear ready. And the last thing you might want to have on hand if you're going to be working with super glue and resins is a super glue activator. So I just glued this one into place and we're just going to touch. I just use an old piece of sprue off of a plastic model to dip in there. I don't like using the spray bottle. The spray bottle kind of puts a lot of activator everywhere. And we're just going to touch it to these little areas and that will instantly bind these. So these will be locked into place and we won't have to worry about knocking them off. So it actually can be a little bit even quicker building than regular plastic model building. Okay, and the last two things we need to uh, fix into place are the drive sprocket and the idler wheel. And the idler is a two-piece setup, and we want to make sure we line up both of these flat spots on both sides, plus also get the, uh, the holes lined up. Now, obviously, I still got to go in there and clean up those a little bit better, but you can see once we get that in place, we'll be able to glue those together, and that'll get placed right inside there nice and straight. And as for the drive sprocket, the drive sprocket has another gear that gets fixed on the inside and they recommend you leave it off for right now because there's a chain that is going to be wrapped around it so you want to make sure that gets put on but when we're going to attach this take a look at overhead don't just glue it into place like this take a look at the top and make sure you get that as centered as possible because that is going to help line up with the uh, the tracks so we can go ahead and glue that in and that in get both of those built up and now we can start building the rest of the chassis Okay, now we're going to start the uh, the lower chassis, and we've got both sides of our running gear built. Remember, when you're putting on the drive sprockets, make sure that you've assembled them in such a way that the inner chain gear can go on the inside of both of them because it gets hidden inside like this. So you don't want to accidentally put this on backwards and have it both be on the outside and one on the inside. Now, with that done, we can go ahead and start attaching the lower chassis. And with that done, we can now attach it to the running gear. And there are two little pin holes here that will line up to the corresponding side. And you can see it actually, when it falls into place, you'll have a little bit of friction on it there. So you'll be able to line it up just the way it's supposed to. Actually, we'll go ahead and put a little bit of kicker on there too to help solidify it right away. Okay, next we're building up the chain drive that drives the uh, the tractor and the chain comes with all these little sections of train that you have to, chain you have to clean up by knocking off the excess and then we build it up to the point where we're starting to wrap it around the drive sprocket. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to do any more on the chain right here just because it's going to be kind of difficult to place in there if we build too much of it. So we'll go ahead and clean this up of course a little bit more but then we will glue it into place on the other side here. Get this portion of the and we'll start getting it to wrap around the drive gear and then we'll gradually from the bottom start working on the rest of the uh, the piece going around by adding the individual sections onto it and that way we should get a nice uh, a wrap around chain so i'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning up all the little excess flash on this and then we'll go ahead and glue it in place okay now it's start time to uh build the tracks up and i want to show you a little tip on how to get the tracks off. You don't want to just snap them off because there is a slight little ridge right here that needs to be on the other side too. So we're just using our sprue cutters and leaving that much of it behind. And then of course we can just trim this off and trim off the other side with our sprue cutter. And then we just go in there with a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of a file stick, and then we can sand down and get a nice, straight, even surface. Because if you try breaking them off, you're going to snap off a little bit of that edge, and it's going to be uneven. And I know that because I tried one, and it didn't work right. So with this type of way, we can go in there. It'll take a little bit longer, but we'll get a nice, smooth uh, surface all the way around. The tracks fit together very well. It's uh, They just fit together like that. And there'll be one long run that we'll put on the bottom of the, uh, the vehicle, which will all be flat. Same thing with the top. We'll put a little bit of a sag. And we'll build them up like we do any of the other tracks. And we'll just slightly put them into shape and we'll wrap them around the idler wheel. I've got actually got the, uh, the lower chassis primed outside. I wanted to give it a once over just to see how everything looks. So I thought I'd start working on the tracks. Here is our first run of the bottom ones. And you can see I start to curl up just on the front and back of the track so it'll fit right into place in there. And here is that chassis with a coat of, to me, is gray primer on it. Uh, we went ahead and did that is because it's going to be a lot easier for cleanup because there's still a lot of cleanup I need to do on the chain. And because it's all white resin, it's really hard to see sometimes. So the gray is really going to help us out a lot. And we can go in there and clean up any of the flash on each one of the, uh, the little rings inside here. Make sure we've cleaned up everything else around here as well. And then once we get that, we can... We're actually not going to, I shouldn't say that, we shouldn't, we aren't going to put the tracks on to last because we want to paint those separately and I want to be able to weather and detail all on the inside of here. So what we'll probably do is we'll leave the tracks aside and now we'll start working on the bucket as well as the, uh, the cab, which we have this big piece that's going to fit right on top there. So we'll start working on that part next. Okay, we've drilled out all of the little openings that we need to to attach the bucket. And if we do it properly, we can make it so the actual bucket will work. So we'll attach inside here. We've got this one other brace that is going to get placed inside of there. And then we will fit in the locking pin, which we will put just a touch of super glue on the outside edge right here. Enough to keep the pin in, but all of these pieces will still work. And then, of course, the bucket will still open. And, of course, there is a pin on the other side as well which hopefully I drilled that odd enough. It worked a minute ago. Might have to do that one a little bit more, but we'll get that done. And then finally up on top here, there is the part where another pulley goes in, and that too is gonna have to get glued in in such a way that the, the piece will still be able to rotate. So you can see right here, and the pulley will go inside. And it actually says hold off on putting the pulley in to a little bit further on so we can get the actual rope around it. And finally, I've gone ahead and attached the, the two pins on either side of the, the boom here. And with that in place, now this will work properly. And this little piece slides up and down the, uh, the little groove that is inside there. So we are now done with this portion of the bucket as well as uh, the arm. And now we can start working on the bigger portion of the shovel arm. Okay, now we're assembling the rest of the shovel arm, and we've got this piece here that has a gear that we just slide into place. And it looks like the only way I can really see how to get this into place is to literally just put the big portion, the big pin in, and slowly flex this so that we can get it to pop without breaking anything, of course. Oh, just like that. Okay, so that actually wasn't too, too bad. And then we also have to attach the front portion of here for the bracing. But before we do that, there is a pin that will go across here that you do need to slightly pull this apart to get the pin inside. So hold off on that. There are a few other little minor parts that we need to glue into place here, uh, like this, this extra uh, gear back here and some other little finer things, which we're going to do right now. And I'll get all those parts put into place and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, now we can apply the rest of the parts that make up the arm. And we're going to put a little super glue on this. I want to actually glue all these into place. I don't plan on having this thing move at all. I just think if you have it move, it's probably asking for trouble later on. And then we will glue these two pieces inside here, just like that. Then there are two outer wheels here. To get press fit into place. And those are, let's see if this fits better on this side. I dry fitted all this a little while ago and it all fits, so maybe, maybe they fit a little better the other way. Yeah, there we go. So those are going to fit on there. And then we can take the arm and slide it through here. 
of course we probably should glue that other piece on too and then once we have this part glued into place which actually I'll do that right now there and with that glued into place now we can apply the bracing up here and that bracing locks and keeps those arms from spreading apart. So we'll glue that into place. And we have our almost complete uh, swing arms uh, piece. Okay, we have to put some of the internal parts inside here, like this radiator and the chair, the console for the driving the vehicle, as well as this uh, part of the gear mechanism that attaches everything. I am going to just glue all this into place, put all the parts in there. We're going to kind of just paint the entire inside one generic color. And more than likely, we're going to fog the win or, uh, excuse me, tint the windows. So you won't be able to see this stuff very, very well anyway, the way I decide to build it. But we will put it still inside there. Okay, it looks like we've jumped a little bit ahead here, but actually it wasn't very much we did at all. Uh, as you can see, we've mated the, uh, the top platform with the lower running gear, and we've also put the other three motors on the, on the base down there. And then, of course, we just pinned into place the, uh, the, the arm in there so we can put it just like that. And also, as you can see, we also threw a coat of gray primer over the entire vehicle. And that was just so we can see where we needed to do some repair work. So I, I started sanding some of these areas down here. And we'll, once we get it all completely sanded, I'll put another coat of primer on it. Now, the way we're going to do this is basically all of this portion of the vehicle I'm going to paint black. The interior I'm going to make black on this because I'm probably going to tint the windows. So you're not going to be able to see very much inside of it anyway. And I want all this running gear to be like a black color. Maybe we might paint this body color. And then I'm thinking of kind of a brighter yellow or orange for my, my cab. So we're going to leave this separate for right now and we're going to paint the entire cab separately. So I am going to spend a little bit of time. We're going to get all this part sanded up right here and cleaned as best as we possibly can. And then we'll be able to put a coat of black over all of these pieces right here. Also, I'll show you, I, I've started adding the chain that we need to put in here, but you'll notice that we didn't connect it yet up in here. Because once we do that, that is going to prevent this uh, gear from rotating. So we're going to pick the spot that we want this, uh, this piece in. And then what we'll do to that, then we'll attach the, uh, the rest of the chain on there. And I don't know, I'm kind of debating now too, um, for visual effects. I'd kind of like the, the arm up in the air with the bucket up here. And of course this will swing back right here. Actually more like that. Uh, it's kind of more visually appealing to have it up in an up position as opposed to just, you know, resting on the ground like this. I mean, it's cool, but I think it would kind of be nicer to have it up. Like I said, though, once we decide on how we're going to do it, we're going to have to glue it into place like that, and it's going to be permanently affixed like that. Okay, I'll show you what we've done right now. Obviously, you can see the color of the vehicle I've chosen is going to be this bright, like, construction-type orange. So I painted all the lower running gear and gave it a quick little shot of clear coat to seal that in. And then I just painted a few of the little accessories inside, like the chair, which painted it brown, and the tops of all those uh, levers are all red. And that is just so when we look inside, you're going to see a little bit. I've also taken a little bit of metallic powder and brushed up on any of these areas right in here just to have, like, a little glint of light on them. You'll also notice too that I have secured the boom arm into place and all that required was pulling the pin here and on the other side, super gluing that in, sliding in, holding it into place and using a little kicker to set it up. And we also did this arm right here by putting just a little bit of super glue on the inside of there. Now it's pretty sturdy as you can imagine with the super glue, but we are of course going to wire that and that'll give it even more support inside of it. But we wanted to get this into the right position just so we're ready to go with it. Now off camera, I've also painted the body orange and it's drying right now and I'll show you that in just a couple of seconds, but that should just make it so it'll pop right on top of here. We can glue that into place. Once that is done, we can finish the chain going around this uh, drive sprocket right here, and then also the chain going from here and into here that controls the actual arm. But that all needs to be done after all of this is secure. Okay, now I'm assembling the tracks, and the, the tracks are a little bit more difficult than using, like, let's say, a plastic track because the cement has so much time to dry. We're using super glue on these. 
So what I've done is I've made up a whole run of the lower portion right here and just glued them all together. And then we gradually go down the line and fit the, the rounding tracks over carefully on it and just putting a touch of super glue just in the front and getting the wrap around. That way we can pull the entire set of piece of, or the entire set of tracks off and we will leave a gap back here in the back and be able to paint them and weather them and all that. It's, it's a time consuming process. It's not impossible. It is a little bit more work. You wanna just make sure that the glue is only on the front. Okay, you can see the one set of tracks on the side here and we actually put a little weathering on there too to see how they were looking. Now we're gonna attach the cab onto the main part of the body. But what you need to do first is you need to attach the line that's gonna go through here. So I super glued it on top of there and then I put it on the inside or actually coming out of this hole right through the middle here. And then we can go ahead and attach the body because that needs to come through all the way. Now you'll see that I've gone ahead, it's painted in a nice bright orange. We've also installed the windows inside all of these pieces that was uh, a decent amount of work to say the least, uh, especially trying to get him inside there, but we've got him in now. And now we can go ahead and rig the uh, all the wiring on that. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's all done. Okay, we've got all of the rigging in place for the uh, the shovel. And now I'm just taking a foam sponge and since we've got the majority of the construction complete on this, we're just gonna put some minor chips we want it to look like it's something that's been or been around the yard for a little bit of time and getting a little beat up so we need the little edge marks around the windows around these pieces not too too terrible but enough that we're gonna make it look like it has been used for a few years and it's just like I said a piece of tor torn uh, foam sponge dipped in a mixture which I will show you on the bottom down here makes a good chipping color and we'll hit around the door edges just enough to make it look good like it. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and we'll come back and move on to the next step. And we're also gonna put a few little streaks of grime and rust on it, real light rust, but I'm putting them on kind of heavy right now and then we'll take our big wide brush. Dipped in a little thinner. Just kind of streak some of these down. And then any areas we want to clean up, we can hit it with a cotton swab. Get rid of most of the excess on it there. And this is something we'll go over the entire vehicle with, kind of dirty it up. And the final thing we'll do is we'll put some of the pigment that we have on the tracks onto the actual parts of the vehicle too to give it some dirt effect. Especially up on the tops inside here because there'd be like dirt and grime and stuff building up on side there. And of course all on the inside of the uh, track area. Okay, what we're doing now is we're just going over with some different colors of uh, enamel streaking agents. And this one we're happen to be using some dark rust and some streaking grime. We're just going to go all around inside here. We started putting it up on the sides of the wall here and streaking it down to give it the effect that, that it's been in a yard getting dirty. And of course now we want to first put all this down in here, fill in these areas. And then we're going to put some more on of course. Then we can take our, our other brush here and put some streaking lines into it. Pull it down and then finally cotton swab to knock off any of the excess that we don't want on there. So we're gonna do this over the entire vehicle. You can see we started doing it up here. We've also started to highlight any of the, the rivets and we're gonna go over those again with some enamel thinner on them to kind of lighten them down a little bit, kind of blend them in. So, and as you can see, I have not attached the top of this yet to the base. And that is just so, just in case I have to get in there to attach those those lines, the last little bit of chain, that I'll still be able to have access to it. But once I'm sure that the chain will go on, we'll go ahead and glue this down to the top. Okay, now all I'm doing is taking some of our pigment powders. And in this case, I'm using European Earth 
some dark earth, some track rust, and a few other pigment colors. And we're just going over and blending in and kind of dusting up and dirtying the vehicle a little bit more. And just lightly brushing it on and then blending it into the paint, keeping it kind of heavy along the track areas. We want to make sure those look really dirty and full of uh, all kinds of grime and dirt and stuff. Now you also notice too, we finished rigging the, uh, the rest of all of the lines as well as we've also completed the chain and then also the chain on the inside in there too. And this line is the elastic line so that if you do do this, you won't knock any of it off and break any of it. So I am just going to go ahead and put the rest of the pigment powders over the entire vehicle, kind of dirty it up a little bit more, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Well, here we are, guys. Here is our completed model. Uh, I have to say I'm very, very impressed with the way the, uh, the kit came out. First of all, it is a resin model like we talked about earlier, so it is going to be a little bit more involved than, say, building up a, uh, a plastic kit plastic kit that you can use liquid cement on and you know play with the tracks a little bit more and just just a little bit easier sometimes with the liquid cement because this you're using primarily super glue and super glue can sometimes be a giant pain but uh, we didn't have too many problems with it here uh, we've gone ahead as you can see and completely dusted over and kind of dirtied up everything on the vehicle to make it look like it's uh, it's been used for a few years so to speak I'm not quite sure I looked up online I believe this was used like in the 40s and 50s, this vehicle, so uh, uh, the orange is pretty bright on it, but I wanted something a little bit different on my particular one, make it stand out. I'll go ahead and turn on the, uh, the turntable here so you guys can get a little 360 of the entire vehicle. Uh, like I said, overall, it wasn't too difficult in the sense of, you know, actually putting it together. It was more or less cleaning up and working with super glue. That's always, those are always two of the fun parts on any type of uh, resin build. Let's see, hopefully it'll clear. That boom sticks out pretty high, so I'll have to move that back a little bit. But you get an idea of, of what it's like. Uh, Took me a little bit longer than a normal kit, that's why I haven't had a video out for a little bit of time. But uh, very happy, glad to put this into my collection with uh, all my other stuff. And actually, it probably would have been a pretty good idea after I painted it orange, someone brought up, hey, you should paint it in olive drab. I'm sure somebody in the military at one point used something similar to this or even these particular ones. We could have done it in an army color to go with uh, you know, any other type of stuff that we build in the future. So, hey guys, I want to thank you guys as always for watching, and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.